Hello and welcome back to the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing our patented Inside EVs 70 mile an hour highway range test on a Porsche Taycan base model. This is the rear wheel drive model, the one that actually is EPA range rated at the longest range. Its EPA combined range rating is 225 miles per charge. However, its highway EPA range rating is 200 40 miles per charge. Well, it's like 239.8 or something like that. So we're going to call it at 240. Now, Kyle Connor had previously done a range test on a very similarly specced rear wheel drive Taycan. The wheels were a little bit different, but other than that, it was the same. Uh, and he finished up with 293 miles per charge. So we're expecting a good result. Now, the Taycan's always outperform their combined EPA and their highway EPA range rating. When we do these tests, it's just something about the Taycans. They just always outperform their EPA range rating by a lot. So we have high hopes for this guy today. I'm going to hop out on the New Jersey Turnpike and drive in loops up and down the Turnpike until the guy won't go any further. And I'm going to end up here at this Electrify America DC fast charge station in East Brunswick, New Jersey. We like to start and end the range tests at the same location whenever possible. It's a pretty good day for range testing, not perfect. It's around 61 degrees now, but it's gonna get up to about 70 today. So between 60 and 70 during the range test should be really good range weather. Not perfect, but really good. There's slight wind going on out there. We're gonna monitor it as we drive, but that shouldn't have too much of an effect on today's range. So I'm gonna hop in this car, get out on the turnpike and see how far she goes. The last thing I wanna mention is we just completed, um, I had it down to about 50%, plugged it in, charge it from 50% up to 100% to make sure the battery's nice and warm before we start the range test. So it's all done. Gonna hop in now and see how far she goes. We'll check in once we're out on the turnpike and on the way. But don't forget, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All right, so we're out on the New Jersey Turnpike now, locked in at 70 miles an hour. We can go over some of the things that we do when we do these range tests. Now for Inside EVs, Kyle Connor and I do most all of the range tests and we have a set protocol that we follow for the range test so that it's relatively consistent from range test to range test. Now we always like to qualify this by saying, look, this isn't perfect. This isn't in a lab. This is not completely controlled environment. So what we do with these range tests is try to give people a good idea of what they would get if they were driving under the same conditions, same temperature, same uh, topography, uh, you know, but all the roads everywhere you drive has different topography. It's different temperature when you drive. So this isn't like, okay, this is how far the car will go. No, this is how far the cars go on the exact tests that we do in the exact circumstances we're in. Uh, but that said, what we do try to do is control as much as we can. Like for instance, I make sure I set the tire pressure to the manufacturer's suggested tire pressure. And in the case of the Taycan today, it was dead on. That almost never happens. When I get a car, I always have to um, either let some air out or put some air in or the tires aren't perfect. I'll tell you when Porsche gave me this car, it was perfect. The, it has staggered tires, so there's different pressure for the front than the back, but all four were perfectly on when the car was cold, which is what you like to see. Um, doesn't really surprise you with Porsche. Like, you know, everything's got to be perfect and meticulous. Um, so we set the tire pressure. We also check the speedometer for GPS, which I did. And because um, sometimes speedometers are a mile or two off at 70 miles an hour. In the case of the Taycan today, it was pretty much right on. So I set the cruise control at a steady 70 miles an hour. Going to continue this driving up and down the turnpike. I do it in a loop fashion and we do that. We always drive in loops. It's never one way. And we always try to end up where we started at the same charging station uh, because then that uh, tries to negate elevation changes and wind as i said earlier if you've got a headwind one way you'll get a tailwind the next way it'll kind of offset whatever uh wind there is that day but again it's not in a lab we're not perfect 
Um, what else do we do here? Oh yeah, we set the car in the efficient driving mode that it has. In the case of the Taycan, it's range mode. So I'm set in range mode. We always put the, um, uh, the heating and cooling on. Uh, we'll set it on the lowest fan speed and either somewhere between 68 degrees and 72 degrees, depending on what makes us comfortable. Um, in the case of this today, I have it set at 69 degrees and at the lowest fan speed that there is. I'm not using much of it today, honestly, because it's beautiful weather. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we started out, it was about 60 degrees, but now it's already up to 65 degrees. So uh, it's warming up nicely today. It's good range weather, not perfect range weather. I'd like to see it maybe 10 degrees warmer, somewhere around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but this is still good range weather. And then I check our wind apps, which I did. I checked my wind apps, not bad today, not perfect. We had a seven mile an hour wind coming up from like the uh, south uh, southeast. So it's kind of uh, a little bit of a cross headwind in the direction I'm driving right now, but once I turn around, it'll be a tailwind, and we try to do that to negate the wind, and uh, that's why some companies that we see, some other news outlets, when they do their EV range tests, it's like one big, long, straight ride. Listen, you can do a range test a million ways, but that's definitely flawed when it's a one way because you could have, uh, wind could be a big factor and there could be a big elevation change from one point to the other. That's why Kyle and I always try to start and finish at the same point. We think that makes the range test a little bit more fair. We'll check back when we're at 75% state of charge. We'll see how far we went in the first quarter of the Porsche Taycan range test. So we're at the 75% state of charge point. We were 25% into the range test and we went 81 miles. That's excellent. I was shooting for about 75 miles because if we cover 75 miles in each leg, we'll hit about 300 miles, which I think would be an incredible accomplishment for a car that has a combined EPA range rating of 225 miles. Now, one of the things I will note is just because we went 81 miles on the first leg does not mean we're going to repeat that in the other legs. We do these range tests all the time and very rarely is there like really consistent results from 100 to 75, 75 to 50, 50 to 25, and then down to zero. Usually fluctuates for whatever reason. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Number one, uh, the BMS doesn't always have the exact state of charge. It's kind of a, a close estimate. Number two, we do drive in loops up and down the highways and we might get a little bit of a headwind in one direction, a little bit of a tailwind in the other direction. That makes a big difference. Uh, even just a few miles an hour uh, wind, a headwind of a couple miles an hour can knock a couple of miles off your range. So let's see, but really good start. We're on pace. Geez, if we were to repeat that, we'd hit like 325 miles. I really don't think that's happening. Um, when uh, my friend Kyle did the range test on the same uh, base Taycan with the Performance Plus battery pack, he finished up with 293 miles. So my goal was somewhere around there. It'd be love to crack, love to crack 300. But listen, um, it is what it is, and we'll ride this baby down to zero. See how far she gets. We'll check back in at 50% state of charge. All right, so we're humming along at 50% state of charge. We are at the 156 mile point. However, I actually was enjoying a good Skinnerd song and forgot to record the gauge right when it hit 50. I noticed when we were at 49%, and at that point we had driven 158 miles, so I'm dinging two miles off of it, calling it at 156. So we did 81 miles the first 21, uh, the first 25% of the trip. On the second 25% of the trip, we added another 75 miles. So we're at 156, 50% state of charge, humming along, things are okay. Traffic hasn't been that great. We had a couple slowdowns because there's been some construction on the New Jersey term. It's the fall, so they do repaving. So there's been these small sections where for like a quarter of a mile, we slow down to like 10 miles an hour and that lasts for like 10 minutes. 
um, and that really drops my average speed down, but it really doesn't affect the range test because if we're only driving about a half a mile, a quarter mile, something like that, at a very low um, speed, it really doesn't affect the range or even really the consumption that much. Um, but it is something to note. Uh, it is uh, that happens in the real world, but overall, it's really not going to make any uh, real noticeable effect on the final range. It's just going to mean that my average speed is going to look like it's lower than it actually was while we're driving. Uh, because while I'm driving, at least, um, the majority of the time, just about the entire time, it's set, locked in at 70 miles an hour. Um, then you get these little periods where for 10 minutes you're going five miles an hour in traffic just for like a quarter of a mile and that skews the number down. But what's not gonna affect the range test really at all. We'll check back when we're at the 25% state of charge point and we only have 25% of the ride to go. All righty, we are at 25% state of charge. We've done 75% of the trip and we've covered 226 miles. So we covered 70 miles in that last 25% uh, of the drive. 81 miles in the first 25%, 75 miles in the second and now 70 in the third so we're getting less and less each uh, section of the trip however our consumption rate's been really hanging right around 3.4 3.45 miles per kilowatt hour so that's been pretty consistent but the range has dropped down a little bit now we do these loop style drives there's different elevation change, slight elevation change here on the New Jersey Turnpike, not a lot. And there's also a little bit of wind that, that kind of aids you and hurts you in each leg of this trip. So we're at 226 miles, 25% of the way to go. Uh, the only last thing I'm gonna add before we finish up is that the Taycan is such a pleasurable car to drive. I love this. This is like the fourth or fifth Taycan I've gotten on media loan. And these things just glide along on the highway and they're great range cars. I mean, we're gonna finish up with about 300 miles and this is EPA range rated combined at 225 miles per charge, but we're gonna crush that. Um, we're gonna go way, way, way beyond that. We're gonna, we're gonna finish up really close to what Kyle Connor did. He finished up with 293 miles per charge. So we're gonna be really close to that. Uh, I think we might even beat it a little. Might get close to that uh, 300 mile range milestone. Um, but let's see, we'll uh, check back in when we are at the Electrify America charging station in East Brunswick, New Jersey. That's where we started and that's where we're finishing up. See you then. All right, so we pulled off the highway at 296 miles and immediately hit a wall of traffic where we sat there for like 10 minutes and it was like a little bit more than a mile from here you could see we're at zero percent state of charge when i pulled off the highway we were at one percent state of charge and now we're pulling into the electrify america charging stations and let's see how far we've gone we're at zero percent state of charge zero miles remaining let's go up to the trip 297 0.3 miles with a consumption rating of 28.5 kilowatt hour per 100 miles, which is uh, basically uh, 285 watt hour per mile. And when we translate that to miles per kilowatt hour, uh, it's going to be right around 3.45, 3.46, something like that. I'll do the math and let you know, but we're right around there, probably just a touch under uh, 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So let's plug in now and do a zero to 100% DC fast charge test, which is gonna be the next video that you'll get. All right, well, that's a wrap. We finished up with 297 miles driven. That's a fantastic finish for the Taycan. I mean, these cars are great road tripping cars and that doesn't tell the whole picture. They also charge really well, which we're gonna do next. So look out for that video. We're gonna have our DC fast charge test video up in about a week. So keep an eye out for that. I mean, that's all part of the picture charges fast, it goes far. I mean, the, the, the Tycons constantly outperform their EPA range rating. This guy's 
EPA highway range rated at 240 miles per charge. And here at 70 miles an hour, we did 297 miles per charge. And I bet I could have went three more miles, uh, maybe not at 70 miles an hour, but just driving around the parking lot or something, because it still had a little left in it. But I had already driven uh, probably about a mile past zero. And uh, I know the Tycons don't have a huge lower end buffer, so I don't want to call a tow truck. Uh, we finished up with a consumption rating of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour on the nose, which is excellent for this car, considering it's got these big, huge, beefy tires on it. Now, it does have the 20-inch uh, Turbo S aero wheels. These aren't the best or most aerodynamic wheels for the Taycan, but they're one of the most aerodynamic wheels. So we had good wheels on here. We also don't have the um, power charge port up at the front of the vehicle. And when you don't have that, you can get the um, extra aero airfoil that's right behind that. I'll zoom in on that so you could take a look at it. So that gives you a little bit better range. Um, of course, I said we put it in range mode, which lowers the car down a little bit and gives it the best opportunity to be as slippery as possible. And uh, another thing that I wanted to note, we, I mentioned before that the highway EPA range rating is 340 miles per charge. The combined EPA range rating is, is I keep saying 340, it's 240 miles per charge. And the combined EPA range rating was 225. Um, and that's unusual. Most electric vehicles have a higher combined EPA range where usually the highway is lower because you're driving at higher speeds. There's more wind resistance. Electric vehicles become less efficient. The Taycan's one of the few uh, electric vehicles that actually does better in the highway range cycle than it does in the city cycle which is very interesting. I think that's why these cars do so well in our highway range tests, which all the Taycans do. Even the larger, big cross Turismos do you know, exceptionally well in our range test. I mean, this guy finished up with 297 uh, miles per charge. I did the Tesla Model S Plaid last week, and that finished up with 300 miles per charge. So it's only three miles more, and that has a combined EPA range rating of 348 miles per charge more than 100 miles more than this, yet they only had three mile difference in our 70 mile an hour highway range test on the same exact course in very similar condition. As a matter of fact, when I did the Tesla Model S Plaid test, it was a little bit better conditions because it was a little warmer. So, you know, that could have been two or three miles right there. In any event, that's what we finished up with. Great showing for the Porsche Taycan. Uh, base model, rear wheel drive uh, with the extended range battery pack. I have to make sure I note that. This has the 93.4 kilowatt hour extended range battery pack. The, the performance battery pack, the standard one with this comes with a 79 kilowatt hour battery pack, but this has the optional 93 kilowatt hour battery pack. It costs an extra, I think, $5,780. So it's about $6,000, a little less than $6,000 more. If you're getting a Taycan, I think it's worth the extra $5,780. Um, we're trying to get a Taycan with the base performance battery pack, the, six, the 79 kilowatt hour one, but uh, Porsche doesn't send the media cars over here with the base, the base battery pack. I guess they don't want people to say, oh, the car doesn't have a lot of range. So uh, it's hard for us to get one. We're, we're gonna keep trying, we're gonna keep pressing Porsche to give us one with the standard range battery pack. I think as soon as um, they have one here in the US, they'll either give it to Kyle or myself and we'll range test that one, but for now, Rear wheel drive, base Taycan, nearly 300 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. Fantastic result. Don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle range tests, charging tests, first drives, all that stuff on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.